Who would like to start us off? Hi Ross, I'm Rizzo. I was just saying that sir, you're playing well enough to be in England so tomorrow. Do you feel like you're playing well enough to play for England right now? I believe I am, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm playing a big role in, in the side at the minute and um, I, I believe my performances show that I'm capable of being in the England squad now, so, you know, hopefully. What would you say the Sari's done for your game this season as compared with Conte last season? Um, you know, I had a difficult time last season with a lot of injuries and, you know, getting back playing, but, you know, my main focus was to get back in routine last season obviously I didn't play that much but you know I knew that this season would be would be the the chance for me to kick on and you know Sarri's given me the chance to play and I've played and you know and I hope I've, I've took my chance Can you say though from a technical point of view he's making you a better player an England player? Yeah from a technical point of view he's making me a better player because um, you know we're doing a lot of tactical work and you know his philosophy is is um, suitable for my style and you know when I, I feel like as the season goes on I'm going to continue to Im improve. Gareth, um, Gareth Southgate has said several times that he needs his, his players to be playing some football. Obviously you have been or they haven't started every game. Do you think you're playing enough minutes to be in the England squad? Yeah I've played a lot of minutes you know from the start of the season. Um, I've had a strong pre-season as well so you know I'm feeling as fitted as as I've ever felt before, so I feel the amount of games that I've played, um, I'm, I'm ready f to be called up if, if called up. Would you be disappointed if you saw the players who aren't playing minutes are in there and you're not? Yeah, I think it's natural, you know, to to think that way. Um, but you know, I've just got to do. I'm sorry, <coughs> I've just got to do what I can, you know, for Chelsea Football Club, and hopefully that'll take care of itself, you know, with the national team. Can you give us an idea, Ross, of, of what? What is what Sarri's said to you? What he's changed? Has he changed parts of your game or parts of, parts of uh, how you operate in training? Um, you know, it's just uh, his his philosophy is um, he's he's still getting it across to the players. So, but, but I think we've started off really well. You know, we're unbeaten, and and for me, you know, his style of play really suits mine. So I feel like as the season goes on, I will show a lot more what I'm capable of, and I'll start to score a lot more and I'll assist a lot more. So yeah. But why does it suit you? Um, it's just you know it's um, our players are high up the pitch. He likes to press and um, and when we receive the ball, we're higher to the, close to the goal. You know to to sh take shots, create chances, and um, that's that's my, the way I like to play. Have you ever actually been coached so much by your managers? Probably, I, I'd say not really. Like right now, I'd say Sari's philosophy has um, helped me a lot because over over the. Over the years, I haven't really been coached much, and um, but you know, I'm at a, I'm at an age now where I, I understand football a lot more, and um, I know how important it is to to take the, the different tactics from different managers on board, and and I feel like you know, right now, I'm I'm ready to understand every way, every aspect of the game. Has it been the case in the past where you've just been kind of almost told to go out and play, whereas now you're getting told specific? More so, yeah. I, when I broke into the Everton side fr uh, under Roberto Martinez, it was I was playing in a number ten role, and I'd never played there before. In, in me, from when I was developing through the academy to the first team, so I was I was getting used to that role as a number ten player. But normally, I was a number eight, or you know, before I broke my leg, I was a, a deep line midfield player. So I've always been a centre midfielder. Added in a two or a three, and um, you know now I'm in a three, and I feel real, really comfortable with that that role. Moose, should we go Moose and then Andy? Um, how much would you say playing alongside better players here? And obviously, you say that better players like Eden Hazard just brought your game on. Them. I, but, you know, it's just being on the same wavelength. You know, you see it in training how quickly the players think, and you know, we've got really really exciting players in the likes of Willie and Pedro and Hazard, you know, when they're attacking thirds and you know, to see to see how how quick they think in training to then taking it into their games, you know, it's being on a similar wavelength as, as them and and, you know, day to day you you're continuing to improve and on game day it's you know, playing with world class players is only gonna take you to a better level. It would be disrespectful I said last year was, was a waste of the year, but it was yeah. a, a year where you largely treaded water. Because of the few games you played. Yeah. In that time, everybody's mentioning people like Bill Foden, Mason yeah. Mount, 
Macquarie farms, young young players that are coming through and being linked with England. How much have you had to sort of sit back and go, right, hang on, I'm still largely in that age yeah. bracket, and I've had an England experience, and yeah. therefore why aren't I still being linked? I think it's just because of the last couple of years, you know, I've had injuries, um, and then my last my last year of playing at Everton, you know, we didn't do so well. So you know, but I feel really fresh now, and I'm I'm ready to show what I can do. And how much does this competition mean to you? I mean, obviously you'd rather be in the Champions League. Yeah. Everybody would, but there's still a chance to win a European trophy and get back in. Yeah, it's 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 massive for me. I've took part in it before, and we went a long way when I was at Everton. But right now, you know, I believe you know we're in it to win it, so we're, we're confident and. We've got taken every game as they come, but you know our main focus is is lifting the trophy at the end. Andy, Ross, can you can you tell us where you are kind of mentally now to where you were five six months ago? Because you came to Chelsea, you had your injury, <coughs> yeah. and it, it's quite an unforgiving world still, isn't it? Even though you're injured, and a club like this, I reckon it's quite easy to slip into an abyss. Did you ever struggle with that side of it when you were surrounded by great players, but? Never could see light at the end of the tunnel, really. Yeah, no, I, I came here really excited, and you know, I, I had a few injuries, so it's it's bound to be frustrating for me. But you know, I was mentally mentally tough as I have been with previous injuries. But you know, my focus was to come here and improve. And I I believed at the time where I weren't playing games, I was still improving in training and understanding how, understanding the movements of different players to know what getting used to the players. And, and you know, this season I've I've. I've got a, a strong <coughs> pre-season under my belt and, and and now I'm kicking on. Can you, can you tell us as well what it's like for you, you know, at, at established top level international footballer, when you're being coached by a man who until a few years ago was a bank manager or worked in a bank, how, yeah. how that sits because you played football all your life and this guy's a relatively new coach, to, to have him telling you how to improve your game, is that easy to compute or not? Um, well, you, the gaffer, you don't need to be around him for half an hour to not, to understand how intelligent he is. You know, his his attention to detail is um, really important for each player. You know, to understand what he wants each game. We go into go into we go into with a, a different approach. Um, so he he's, he he prepares for each game and each opponent opponent really well, and you can you understand you can understand how how. Much he loves the game. In, in that sense, then, is it kind of refreshing to have a coach like this who's worked outside of football and is now working? You know, he brings that into football rather than someone who's been in the football bubble all their life. Is it is it different for you? Is it a different it, experience? It's a different experience, of course it is. But you know, he's 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 been in the lower leagues in Italy. He's he's, he's experienced a lot of different things in football. So, you know, when he's built his way up to the top, you know, now he's at Chelsea, and you know, he's. Um, He's fully focused on achieving success here. Adrian? Well, it's just going back to what you were saying about the level of coaching you've had in the past. Now you're getting that from Sorry, uh, and you're seeing the impact it's having in your game. Is it something you wish you know, you've been able to have a bit more focused coaching in the past? Previous clubs under previous managers? I've thought, I've thought about it, and um, I, I believe if, if I did have that type of approach from a coach from when I was younger, then maybe, yeah, I would have. I would have improved a lot more, but you know, th these things happen in football, and, and I'm where I am right now is where I believe I should be. So, you know, I'm I'm in the right place to to show what I'm capable of. Is, is that an issue for young English or foreign players when they get put into teams very early? It's obviously great kind of first team experience and helps build you up in one way, but you miss out on a period of coaching possibly because you're thrust into the team. Yeah, well, it can be that way um, because when when you go through the the youth system, you 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 always you're always going in to do analysis where you're always look you're looking at every every way of improving, and your coaches are always on top of you. And then once you get into the first team, it can sort of change because because of game to game that the managers are focusing on weekly weekly results and not more player development because a lot of the players that are in first teams are all the experienced players that are, know the game and are fully experienced but um, yeah just th that's just the way it, it can go some, some players are more fortunate than others you know to have coaches who are, are fully focused on improvement well, do you Well, I, it, it was hard for me to leave Everton because of of 
them being me me boyhood club, you know, I supported them from from when I was a young kid. So it was a really difficult choice for me to make, but but you know, I felt it was the right time for me to make the take the step. I believe that we were going in the right direction at Everton to be a massive club and compete for titles, but you know, it didn't go that way and and then I, f I felt like this was, I needed I needed to take take this chance. We'll do one uh, final one. Jim, can I ask you how, how he felt to, to miss out on the World Cup, having been to the previous one? Uh, how did you feel and did it strengthen your, your resolve to make this season was, a big one? I was disappointed, of course, um, you know, to see how well the team done and you not, not to be a part of it, you know. But, you know, uh, my focus was to come here. I'd, I'd been injured and I understood that that, that could be the case if, if it took me a while to get back to, back feeling really well. So... I've I accepted it and I, I I've went away and I've worked hard and I believe that over the next couple of years I can be take part in the Euros I can take part in in the Commonwealth Cup so you know that that's my focus. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.